Hi folks, Jason Webster here. Welcome to this episode of Inside PTI. Thanks so much for watching. Hey, today I thought I'd give an update on what some of our corn looks like that had herbicide contamination on it back in June. If you remember, we released an Inside PTI episode that showed some corn that had some herbicide damage. Our ag retailer accidentally, still hurts me to say it today, accidentally put clethenum on our corn. And uh, it, it, it still hurts today that it actually happened. It's one of the hardest things I've uh, had to deal with in farming. But nevertheless, it is farming and uh, some of these things do happen. So it's all about how do you manage this thing? How did we manage it? Well, this is the corn that we replanted on June 15th. It looks pretty green, looks pretty healthy, looks pretty good right now. Let's talk about the very beginning. So once we figured out we needed to replant, um, I thought, what do I do with this thing? I had some dead tissue here. You can see some of the, the pictures. Um, of what the corn looked like when it was going through that phase of, of dying from the active ingredient of clethenum. And I wanted to remove that dead tissue. So one of the hardest things I've ever had to do farming was I brought a bat wing mower in and I removed all the tissue. We just chewed it all up and, and uh, we bush hogged this thing. It was just, just terrible. I was in a terrible mood. I was mad when the whole thing happened and, and that didn't make things uh, any better. <laughs> but nevertheless, that's how we, we went and approached this thing. And then I did bring a soil finisher in just to lightly scratch it. I wanted to get rid of that, that, that root ball that we had in there from that, that, that plant that, that, that was killed off. And we are a banded situation, a strip till situation here at this farm. So um, we've got our banded nutrition down and I want to plant into that strip again. And so I just didn't feel comfortable with planting into that old root that was in there. And I wanted to pull it up and get rid of it to a certain degree. So right, wrong, or indifferent, that's what we did. We bush hogged it down and lightly scratched it with a soil finisher. It was about 110 degrees outside when we, when we did all this. We planted the corn on June 15th and the corn came up in about four days. Now, some of you may say, well, that's, that's pretty good. You know, you're trying to beat the calendar here and that corn coming up in four days was, was a good thing. It actually hurt us a little bit because we had so much active ingredient out here in the, in the soil from that herbicide contamination. Not only did we have clethenum, but we think uh, we had unsafe and dual out here and it's just that plant was growing so fast because it was 110 degrees outside and and uh just just hot soils but it was trying to metabolize all that active ingredient and we lost a few plants per acre as a result of it so not a perfect stand here out in the field nonetheless this is what it looks like again a june 15th plant date now we kind of had to change things a little bit what are we going to test now we lost the the original research that we were trying to do out here um, we are looking at seeding rate if we're going to be in a, a late planting situation how thick do we plant this so we've got populations of uh, 36,000 38,000 40,000 seeds per acre in a high yield irrigated we've got tile underneath this we've got irrigation here so we're trying to run and, and, and get all kinds of yield here um, what hybrids did we end up planting well I, I you know seed supply was somewhat of an issue we wanted viptera corn to protect us from earworm that we'll talk about here in a little bit but I've got anywhere from 103 day corn to 110 day corn in this particular trial behind me on some other areas of the farm. We went down to 102 to 108 day corn, but a nice range of, of hybrids to see, you know, how, how our, you know, hybrid RM, you know, relative maturity going to affect yield and getting, getting this corn done at the end of the season, getting to black layer. So, but this is what the corn looks like. We've got a nice regimen. I'll show you what the regimen looks like, you know, the our high yield protocol on this corn here in a minute. But right now it looks pretty good from the outside. Let's go inside and take a look at this corn. All right, so here we are out in the field. This is a 103 day relative maturity uh, corn. This corn does have the Viptera trait on it for earworm. And uh, corn looks pretty good right here. I guess uh, we think about the weather we had while this corn was trying to, uh, well, when it first came up out of the ground, we had, as I said earlier, 110 degrees and we were pushing heat units like crazy, uh, trying to gain on that, trying to gain on the calendar. Once we got to pollination time, um, not a lot of stress. Again, we've got tile and irrigation on this, this corn. So we were able to, to get rid of excess water and then bring water in when we needed it to irrigate. Pollination time we actually went pretty well. We had some cooler weather. We had a, a few rains and you can kind of tell that um, we're actually in a 38,000 population right now uh, part of the study and we've got some nice nice looking ears here. We've got some nice length off of this. Most of the ears that I've broke open are 16 to 18 rounds. So this corn's trying to, to do what it uh, 
what it wants to do and give us give us high yield even though today as we film this it's september 13th and uh, this corn's got a long ways to go now we got through pollination fine and you look at some of these leaves we've done a really nice job of keeping this corn healthy keeping disease out of it late season disease anytime you have late planted corn you know you always run into the risk of leaf diseases gray leaf spot rust things like that after our year with tar spot a year ago, we were definitely on a preventative program to keep this corn clean, to keep tar spot out of here. You can find a little bit of tar spot. It just happened in the last few days. Um, so it's, it's, it's late in the, in the ball game here. And I'm hoping that we don't have to spray again with a fungicide. We have applied a fungicide twice to this corn. I don't want to do a third time, okay? But we're gonna keep scouting this corn. If we need to, we will. I wanna keep this corn healthy. I wanna keep it alive. I don't want it to die here because I wanna I want to try to protect as much yield as we can. But I think we've done a decent job trying to keep this corn nice and healthy. And uh, now it's just a matter of getting it through to finish. The whole trick to this corn is gonna be getting it finished. And what do I mean by that? It's gonna, it's gonna be getting it to black layer before the frost comes. So right now, as we track growing degree days, we're on track to hit black layer. We're using 33% is, is that, that rule of thumb number for black layer. It can adjust a little bit by hybrid, but 33% but corn, um, you know, looking at the number of heat units this corn needs, this is again, 103 day corn in this particular case. Right now we're on track to hit black layer, 33% corn on October 5th. Now, today, as I mentioned before, it's September 13th as we film this today. So we've basically got two weeks to go in September and then five days in October, okay? So basically, we need to look at the moisture we're at today and then figure out how fast does this corn need to dry down to hopefully make it before the, the frost comes. And again, we're hoping that, that we're hitting black layer by October 5th. One of the things that we're doing in the we're using in the field to do moisture checks is a SIO. Now moisture checks have changed drastically over the years because before we would have to come out and we'd have to shell this corn, okay, to put it into like a Dickie John t uh, hand tester, things like that. It's totally changed now. We're using this SIO device, okay. Um, the SIO has done wonders for us. It, it's 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 kind of kind of a big deal for us here at this farm for a couple reasons. Number one, this SIO allows us to check moisture of corn without shelling the, the ear. We don't have to, to pull this ear totally off and shell it. With high moisture corn, it's so hard to do. But we can leave it on the plant, just shuck it back, and we can put this SIO right on the ear of corn like this. And very, very quickly, it will give us a moisture evaluation. And it takes five, five checks and in about 30 seconds, I can get a moisture level of these ear, you know, of this corn on these ears, again, without showing it. The other advantage to this SIO tester, I feel, is that we can go up to like 70% moisture corn. We've never been able to do that. It was hard enough to get 30% corn through a handheld moisture tester in the past. This device, using laser technology, we can go up to 70% corn. And so I thought it would be interesting today to do some checks on this corn just to kind of see where we're at moisture wise and how much we need to drop to get to 33 percent corn so we've done this today i'll get some of these leaves out of here but what we do is we use our phone there's an app that, that connects to this via bluetooth and what we do is we hold this device right on this ear of corn it will take just a few seconds and we do this five times okay we do this with five different ears and it'll give us a moisture value. Now I've already done this to save some time in the video. I'm gonna show you the results of the moisture test. This corn tested 56.9%, 56.9%. Now you can see on this, this year of corn, we are starting to dent somewhat on here, okay? And so we're moving this corn along pretty well, hopefully not too fast, because um, I want to finish right. I want this, to, this, this corn to weigh. We've worked hard to irrigate this and feed this, and I want it to weigh heavy. And so I, I don't want it to finish uh, too fast where we're losing test weight or kernel weight. But 56.9%, what does that mean? Well, again, I've got two weeks left in September and, and five days in, in October. That's, where, that's my goal is to get this corn done by October 5th. And so what this means is we need to drop moisture by about 1% a day 
out here in the field. Okay, about 1% per day. And I think that's doable if we can get some heat. Now, as we film this on the 13th of September, we've had some really cool days. Matter of fact, yesterday it was a high of 60. I don't need those cool days. Um, I, I need some warmer days to move this corn along. Um, to, to get this moisture to where I want it to be. But I think we're on the right track. I think we're going to make it with the weather forecast we've got coming. They're talking 90 degrees by the end of the week. I think we're going. The trick now is going to be keeping this healthy. If I need to come in and spray this corn again, I'm certainly willing to do it. And that's going to be kind of interesting. I'll have far, you know, farmers, neighbors around me harvesting their corn, and I might be making a last application on this corn to keep it healthy to finish. I don't know. I guess I'll, I'll do it if I have to. But we'll keep scouting this corn and we'll see what we need to do. But right now, we're at 56.9% moisture. The last hybrid we were in, I mentioned it was 103 day corn, but that was golden harvest corn and it was a Viptera corn. And one of the things we wanted to do in a late planted situation was look at the benefits of using Viptera corn because of earworm control. A lot of times when you get into a late planted corn situation, earworm is a concern at pollination and, and ear fill time. So this year for us, we definitely planted late June 15th. And so we had a lot of green lush corn and earworm found this corn. It really did. Now, I think back in 2019, it was a corn prevent plant year. We planted a lot around June 8th or 10th, but everybody planted then. So we had green corn everywhere. And so we could kind of distribute the earworm a lot, around a lot of acres. This year, I'm the only one that's got late planted corn and they found me. And I want to show you what we're dealing with in this late planted corn. It's it's frustrating because, you know, this herbicide damage that we that we, that we had this year. I mean, it's just a gift that just keeps giving. And let me show you what we're running into here in this particular part of the field. Now, here this first year, I want to show you. It's not a, you know, the earworms not you know the damage isn't on every single ear. It is a high percent right now. We're calculating about sixty percent of the ears. This is one that pollinated fine, and we're in pretty good shape. However. We start looking at some other ears. I'm gonna pull this one back and we're gonna start finding some damage. Matter of fact, let me just take this ear all the way off and let me show you what we're dealing with here. So I'm gonna be careful. See if the worm earworm is still in here. It is not. So one of the things that we're finding is we've got plenty of damage on this ear. You see where the earworms came in and they're just kind of chewing on the, the tip of the ear. Okay, so we're removing about anywhere from four to six six uh, rows you know in length all the way around this thing but you can see you know the earworms came in and they're just feeding on that milky corn they're just having a heyday and causing quite a bit of damage on this ear i'll kind of spin it all the way around and you can see this all right now again the earworm is not here now i think this is kind of important i mean this is a it's a decent looking ear it definitely was before the earworm got in but i'm going to count long real quick two four six thirty 32, I got 34 long on this guy. And we are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 rounds. So not a bad ear, especially considering the June 15th plant. Now, let me do a little bit more, more checking here. We're gonna pull this guy back. I'm gonna be careful, so if the worm is in here, I don't lose him. This ear is not tremendously uh, bad, but it had feeding. You can kind of see just the tip. We lost, looks like uh, maybe three, um, you know, on the length here, three, th uh, three kernels long on this. Let me go to another guy here. Okay, I'm gonna pull this guy. I'm just gonna pull him all the way off the plant like this, and we'll start stripping her back, see what we get. Okay, so this one's got a worm in it. So this will give you a good look at it. This is classic earworm damage. And there's that earworm sitting in there. Hopefully you can see that on, on film. Now this one's interesting because, you know, it doesn't have a whole lot of feeding quite yet up here on the tip. You can see a little bit of mold setting in where the initial feeding happened. But that uh, earworm, and I'm not sure what instar that is. This is kind of a smaller one compared to what I've seen. Some of the other ones are really big and they're almost done feeding. Matter of fact, a lot of these ears, you can't find an earworm in it because they're done doing their feeding. But uh, that earworm's just sitting right there and he's going to town on those kernels and uh, having a pretty good lunch right there. 
So this is one of the things we've got to deal with is, you know, we're losing, we're kind of tipping back, if you will, from, from the earworm, chewing on these, these corn kernels, removing them from the, the ear. And then the other thing we've got to worry about is mold. You know, you can see a little bit uh, settling, you know, settling in on these, these I'll kind of zoom in here. And you can see a little bit of mold starting to develop. So as we harvest this corn, once it does get dry enough, that's going to be a concern that we don't get docked due to the due to the mold levels in this corn. Some of the things we're going to have to worry about. I don't think it's going to be a huge problem. I, I do think on certain hybrids that we've got, there is severe earworm pressure, and and there may be some 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 consequences to that. But this corn here, I don't anticipate a whole lot of problems um, with this, other than losing the yield on the tip. Now, one of the things I mentioned earlier, we had to figure out what hybrids we're going to plant, and hopefully I've zoomed out here where you can see all the hybrids, all the hybrid signs up um, on the ones that we planted here in this field. So we've got a DeKalb 5982, a Pioneer 1108Q, Golden Harvest 07G73, and 03R40. 03R40 is, again, that Viptera corn giving us great protection on earworm. The rest of the hybrids do have some earworm damage in them. So we're gonna monitor that through uh, through harvest and we'll kind of see what some of the, the, the differences are out here in the field. But um, the Viptera corn is definitely gonna have a distinct advantage. One of the things we're doing is we're trying to push nutrition on this corn, trying to get it further ahead on the calendar as far as growing degree day. So I wanna feed it, I wanna get this thing going fast. So this, this particular study is a tile management study along with the nature's nutritional study. So we've got tile in this particular case, every 15 feet, we're using it to backfeed water. I've got drip tape on this every 40 inches, 14 inches deep. We're using that in the, to bring water in as well as nutrition. And then I've got kind of a nature's program here, a high yield program in place. And here's what it looks like. These are my planter treatments. We come in with the planter with what we call our five point touch, you know, furrow jet center, furrow jet wing and conceal. I'm not going to go through them individually. We'll do that later after we harvest and we look at all the results. But these are my planter treatment protocols. Are we done? No. We come in with our first herbicide. I've got another protocol of nutrition. Are we done? No, we're gonna continue through side dress. Again, more nutrition, we're reallocating. We're not putting on more than what we need, we're just reallocating and putting on a little bit at a time. Through the fertigation, I'm running four gallon of K fuel and a gallon of side swipe. That's one of the benefits of having the NetFM drip system out here is I can put not only water out, but I can put nutrition along with that water as a carrier. We're going to continue on with some of the foliars. Here's some of my tassel work, my R2 and my R3 applications. We've got some of our fungicides uh, with these applications as well. So that's what we're running in this particular high yield study on this late planted June 15th corn. So today's inside PTI agronomy tip of the day is, yeah, we had a bad situation out here in the farm. The ag retailer screwed up. We got the wrong herbicide on and we had to replant. All right. So it's, it's farming. We're learning along the way and we're gonna get through this thing. What are some of the things that we're learning? Well, relative maturity. How does uh, RM of corn by planting date affect yield? We're also learning about earworm control and different traits to control it. We're learning about that. The high management program, the nutrition program, how is that different from an early planted situation? We're gonna be going through those things. We're learning along the way here at the PTI farm. Bottom line is we're learning every single day. We know farming's not easy, mistakes like this happen. I'm still mad about it, yes I am. Nevertheless, it happened. There's nothing we can do about it, but just try to conquer, right? Go after this thing, take control, and try to fix it, and that's exactly what we're trying to do. We'll bring you yield details on this this winter as we travel around on the PTI uh, winter tour. Can't wait to tell you how this corn did and what some of the differences were out here in the field. Until then, if you have any questions, as always, you can do one of two things. Reach out to any Precision Planning Premier dealer, or you can send me an email at InsidePTI at PrecisionPlanning.com. That's all the time we have for today. We will see you on the next episode of Inside PTI. Thanks for watching.